On September 11, 2001, America was viciously attacked by evil forces. 2,974 people lost their lives that day. Placing 9-11 on the calendar is another date that will live forever in infamy. Americans were shocked, devastated, and outraged by the deaths of those innocent individuals. Yet on that same day, approximately 2,500 additional Americans died of cardiovascular disease. The next day, another 2,500 people died. And again on Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, and the entire following week. In fact, a total of 75,000 Americans died during the month of September from cardiovascular disease. More than 25 times as many people died of cardiovascular disease that September than were killed by terrorists. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death in America. In 2001, over 900,000 people died from this silent killer. On March 28, 1969, President Eisenhower died of a heart attack. Less than four years later, President Lyndon B. Johnson died from a third heart attack at the age of 64. He was only 47 years old when he suffered his first heart attack. In June 2008, Tim Russert collapsed suddenly and died while preparing for the television show, Meet the Press. An autopsy revealed that ruptured cholesterol plaque blocked off a main artery leading to the fatal heart attack. It's frightening to think that even though Tim Russert had access to the finest medical care in America and had recently passed a stress EKG evaluation and also was under the supervision of a cardiologist taking medication for cholesterol and blood pressure, he died at the age of 58 from his first and final heart attack. Heart disease is the number one cause of death for both men and women. In fact, more women die of heart disease in the United States each year than men. In addition, studies show that women are much more anxious about developing breast cancer than cardiovascular disease. There seems to be more news and awareness regarding breast cancer than there is heart disease among women. Yet 12 times as many women will die from cardiovascular disease than breast cancer. It is hard to find someone who does not have a connection to cardiovascular disease. Who do you know that could be next? Which of your loved ones or friends needs an answer to this silent killer before it is too late? The Nobel Prize is considered the world's most prestigious prize. The nomination and selection process of a Nobel Prize winner is long and rigorous. It starts with a nomination of thousands of candidates whose names are scrutinized by experts until only the winners remain. Amazingly, it is not until the winners are announced that they even know they had been nominated. Every year since 1901, the Nobel Prize is awarded to those who, during the preceding year, shall have conferred the greatest benefit on mankind. Now, with over 100 years of Nobel Prizes to look back on, it is clear that some discoveries have conferred greater benefits on mankind than others. The following four Nobel Prize winning discoveries are arguably among the best of the best. Nobel Prize number one. In 1901, the very first Nobel Prize in physics was awarded to Wilhelm Röntgen for his 1895 discovery of x-rays. Nobel Prize number two. In 1923, the Nobel Prize in medicine was awarded to Dr. Frederick Banting and Professor John McLeod for the discovery of insulin. Nobel Prize number three. In 1945, the Nobel Prize in medicine was awarded to Alexander Fleming, Ernst Chain, and Howard Florey for the discovery of penicillin and its curative effect in various infectious diseases. It was a discovery that would change the course of history, recognized as the most efficacious life-saving drug in the world. 
Last but not least, Nobel Prize number four. The Nobel Prize discovery you are about to see, most people have never heard of. Yet it is just as powerful and as life-changing as the X-ray, insulin, and penicillin. It is one of the best of the best. This discovery has the potential of saving approximately 2,500 American lives per day and millions of lives worldwide each year. The Nobel Prize in Medicine for 1998 was awarded to three American scientists for their discoveries concerning nitric oxide as a signaling molecule in the cardiovascular system. So what does that mean? The medical benefits of these discoveries can be summed up in four words. No more cardiovascular disease. And this without drugs or surgery. Dr. John P. Cook, MD, PhD, is head of Stanford Medical School's vascular unit. He wrote a book based on this Nobel Prize winning science called The Cardiovascular Cure. This title alone speaks volumes. Seldom, if ever, do we hear the word cure coming out of the pharmaceutical industry. Treating the symptoms of a disease is far more profitable than finding a cure. On the back cover of this book we read, in 1998, the Nobel Prize was awarded to scientists for the discovery of a chemical produced in the lining of the blood vessels that keeps them free of plaque. Do you think the pharmaceutical industry wants you to know that there is a chemical produced in the lining of your blood vessels that keeps them free of plaque? Of course not. Nobel laureate Dr. Louis Ignaro, who also wrote a book based on his discovery. The title says it all, No More Heart Disease. Think of it, No More Heart Disease? What a bold statement, yet the scientific proof is overwhelming. So why haven't you heard about one of the greatest Nobel discoveries in history until now? Hugh Downs and Bottom Line Books have the answer. Some of you may have seen this advertisement with Dr. Ignaro or have watched the TV broadcast. Bypass in a pill, wins Nobel Prize, then gets buried. Nobel Prize winner Dr. Louis Ignaro made a special appearance on the Hugh Downs broadcast to reveal the covered up truth about this astonishing breakthrough. He's discovered a miracle molecule that could make bypass surgery, angioplasty, and blood pressure drugs obsolete. So why haven't you heard about this? The reason is, this amazing discovery has been killed by big money medicine, meaning big pharma. It's all about the money. Cardiovascular disease is big business for the pharmaceutical industry. In 2007, statin drugs alone generated $34 billion in revenue to the drug companies. We will illustrate how the discovered chemical produced in the lining of the blood vessels keeps them free of plaque. You will learn the most important determinant for your cardiovascular well-being or lack of it. The buried truth the drug companies do not want you to know. At the center of our cardiovascular system is the heart. It beats approximately 100,000 times per day. Without time off or a vacation, your heart will beat about 35 million times in a year. Even at rest, the muscles of the heart work hard, twice as hard as the leg muscles of a person sprinting. Cardiovascular disease affects not only the heart, but also the miles of blood vessels throughout the body. If you were to lay all of the blood vessels in your body end to end, they would extend for 100,000 miles. Think of it. Your vascular network is equal to four times the circumference of the earth. Yet if you're like most people, you have probably not given much thought to the vast network of blood vessels that run throughout your body. Wherever blood flows in your body, it flows through blood vessels. Atherosclerosis is the buildup of plaque on the insides of your arteries. Without proper circulation, our cells starve and don't get the necessary energy and information they need to perform correctly. When this happens, every disease known to man may be generated. 
Medical professionals used to think that plaque would accumulate in the arteries until it completely closed them. That's not correct. We now know that when plaque becomes large and brittle, it can crack and rupture. The crack, like any other cut, and the body clots to stop the bleeding. However, when a clot occurs in the arteries, the result can be catastrophic. We now know that the body is capable of healing itself. Damaged and blocked vessels can open up and function normally again without drugs or surgery. However, as mentioned, most doctors know very little about blood vessels and vascular disease. Instead, they are trained in cardiovascular medicine heavily influenced by Big Pharma. Cardiologists spend much of their time concentrating on the heart as a pump. They learn the skills to perform bypass surgery. About a half a million bypass surgeries are performed in the United States each year, making it one of the most commonly performed major operations. Cardiologists also learn the skills of catheter-based interventions, performing angioplasties and putting in stents. The procedure, introduced in 1977, has grown into an $8 billion a year industry in the USA alone. In 2001, almost 2 million angioplasties were performed worldwide, making angioplasty the most common medical intervention in the world. As mentioned, in 1998, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded for the discovery of a molecule produced in the lining of the blood vessels that keeps them free of plaque. This miracle molecule has been the topic of more than 20,000 medical studies since 1980. The molecule is nitric oxide. The lining of the blood vessels that produces nitric oxide is called the endothelium. It is the innermost layer of tissue that lines the blood vessel. The endothelium is only one cell layer thick. It is so razor thin that it cannot be seen by the human eye. Yet, it has the surface area of eight tennis courts. When you consider that the endothelium lines all 100,000 miles of our blood vessels, amazing if all the endothelial cells in the body were lumped together, they would weigh as much as the liver. The production of nitric oxide is tightly controlled by the tissue that the vessel serves. When the smooth muscle cells that surround the blood vessels are constricted, nerve stimulation signals the endothelium to create and release small amounts of nitric oxide directly where it is needed. As a signaling molecule and as a gas nitric oxide, will diffuse freely through cell membranes. Nitric oxide signals the smooth muscle cells to relax and to open up. By causing blood vessels to open up, nitric oxide increases blood flow through them. Nitric oxide is the strongest natural relaxant of blood vessels. The nitric oxide produced in the endothelium is your body's best self-defense against heart attack and stroke. It has been said that you are only as old as your endothelium. A healthy endothelium is slick like Teflon. By contrast, an unhealthy endothelium is sticky like Velcro, causing plaque to attach. When plaque does not stick, clots don't form, blood vessels don't harden, and you won't die from a heart attack or stroke. The amino acid, L-arginine, is the source the endothelium uses to create nitric oxide. L-arginine is a nitric oxide producer and high potency antioxidant that has power to reverse the buildup of cholesterol in the arteries. The scientific evidence of the benefits of L-arginine and nitric oxide are extensive. The research at Stanford, Harvard, University of South Carolina, National Cancer Institute, National Institute of Health, as well as most cardiovascular centers throughout the world, all point to L-arginine and nitric oxide as perhaps the most important discovery ever in preventing heart disease. In addition to the overwhelming scientific proof, the clinical evidence is equally impressive. Meet Dr. Joe Prendergast. Dr. Joe, as he likes to be called, is board certified in internal medicine as well as endocrinology, 
and metabolism. On June 4, 2008, the American Diabetes Association named Dr. Joseph Prendergast Father of the Year for 2008. At the awards dinner honoring him, Dr. Joe's wife tells the following story. Two years ago, a letter was sent out by the hospital stating that Dr. Prendergast was no longer on the staff because he was dead. This letter proved to be an embarrassment to the hospital as Dr. Joe was alive and well. The hospital wrongfully assumed that Dr. Joe had died because he had not admitted a single patient to the hospital in 16 years. In 1991, Dr. Joe introduced L-Arginine into his medical practice. As an endocrinologist, 80% of his patients have diabetes. According to the American Diabetes Association, two out of three people with diabetes will die from heart disease and or stroke. Prior to 1991 and the introduction of L-Arginine to his practice, Dr. Joe wrote that 30% of his diabetic patients ended up seeing a cardiologist for bypass procedures. Now, 18 years and 5,000 patients later, Dr. Joe has not lost one patient to a heart attack or stroke, nor has he admitted anyone to a hospital. In addition, prior to 1991, Dr. Joe's practice kept three cardiologists in business with his referrals. After Dr. Joe introduced L-Arginine to his patients, the referrals all ended. All three cardiologists went out of business and had to move to new areas to practice cardiology. In his book, Dr. Joe writes, One of my friends and colleagues is a well-respected cardiologist. I used to refer a lot of patients to him. Recently he said to me, Did I do something to offend you? I've noticed that you no longer send patients to me. I said, it's not you. I am not sending my patients to anyone. They don't need cardiologists because we are reversing their heart disease. Finally, not too many of us enjoy growing old. L-Arginine is the basic element that represents the best single product to take for anti-aging treatment. L-Arginine is the source to nitric oxide, and nitric oxide is 1,000 times more powerful than any other natural antioxidant in the body. Antioxidants neutralize free radicals. So what do free radicals do? You just witnessed it.